Hey everybody, before we dive in, please take a minute and check out the link you see on your screen for a message from my sponsor, The Motley Fool. It's the best way to support this work that Tyler and I are doing, and you can get the top 10 stocks to buy right now. So Warren Buffett's stock portfolio, specifically Berkshire Hathaway's stock portfolio, is a massive collection of investments. It's valued at about $330 billion last I looked. It has about four dozen different stocks in it. And if we're being totally honest, it's a great place to get some good investment ideas that aren't high risk and should make you money for years to come. But it isn't perfect. A lot of us want, you know, more excitement or, you know, to branch out a little bit other than Buffett's investment universe. So with that in mind, Tyler and I are going to look at some companies that have a lot of Berkshire-like qualities, but for one reason or another are not in the portfolio. Um, I'll start with home builders. So one uh, one great strategy, if you're, if you're a Buffett fan and you like his portfolio, is to look at some of the stocks in his portfolio and ask if there are alternatives that are just too small for Buffett to buy. Maybe they're great businesses as well, but just too small to get Buffett excited. A home builder with a $1 billion market cap is not going to get Buffett excited and isn't worth Berkshire buying even a 10% stake in. So I know Tyler's mentioned Green Brick Partners before. I'm pretty sure he's still a fan of that home builder. Um, and I mentioned DreamFinders Homes in a previous video. So those are two great Buffett alternatives. I know DreamFinders, just for example, is a very good alternative to Buffett's home builder investment NVR because they have very similar business models. Um, they both have a very land light operating model where they don't actually buy land until they have a home uh, for, under contract for sale. And a lot of, I mean, DreamFinders management has specifically said they modeled the business after NVR. So it could be an earlier stage version of that. Um, they're doing a great job of getting debt under control, which was my biggest concern with DreamFinders for a while. Um, and they're scheduled to report earnings next week. So we'll see how they do. But that's a great example of a comparable that could be even a higher growth potential business, very similar business model to what's in Berkshire's portfolio, but just too small to get Berkshire interested. That with companies like DreamFinders and Greenbrick, it's pretty easy to figure out why they're not in Buffett's portfolio yet. It's because those could be 10 baggers and barely move the needle for Berkshire. And so home builders, I think, have a lot of opportunity in general right now. But I like to play the kind of smaller um, players than, than Buffett does. Uh, Tyler, what do you got? Yeah. So I kind of went down the same road in the sense of like things that would make a lot of sense in the Ber Berkshire portfolio, probably actually would benefit from being in the Berkshire portfolio, but you know, just aren't for pretty much the same reason. They're too small. They like, I, I was saying it before we got on here. It's like with Berkshire, it's like, wake me up when I spend $50 billion. Other than that, I'm going, I'm going back into treasuries, but you know, one business, and this is actually something that's in the wholly owned portfolio. It's, it's quite a small position, but Berkshire owns auto dealerships and auto dealerships are actually one of the businesses that makes a lot of sense for investors in that same way. I know there's a lot of uh, kind of uh, hand wringing lately of like, oh, the, the, the dealership model is, you know, customers are losing faith in this they with things like carvana and a lot of like online buying opportunities for cars but it's it, it i don't think it's the huge threat that i think a lot of people think think that it is because a lot of dealerships have service centers as, uh, aligned to them and service and used cars are by far their largest profit centers actual new car sales are not like the biggest profit generator when it comes to auto dealerships relative to its other components so there's still a lot of revenue and profit generating opportunities in the automotive uh, dealership business that are probably going to last for a very long time, as long as we're probably all still driving cars. And so what is super interesting and why Berkshire likes it so much is because there's a lot of there's a lot of credit involved. Like if a dealership rents, car, you know, has cars on its lot, it normally has to take a line of credit to kind of finance that. And so like low costs of capital is very beneficial for them. So that's why they, they fit really well in Berkshire. But companies that look really attractive right now in terms of automotive dealerships, I think people, if you're looking at like Lithium Motors or Penske, Penske might be the one that ends up in the Berkshire portfolio one day because it's the biggest one. I think it's like $9 billion. So maybe that, that might be large enough for, for something for Berkshire Hathaway to actually take a take a bite at. But Lithia Penske Group One Automotive is also another one worth mentioning. A again, 
very, very stable businesses. Service is a, you know, the service side of the business is an extremely, extremely steady business with good returns. It doesn't seem to have that cyclicality that you would expect out of, you know, new car sales, used car sales, things like that. And, it, you know, relative to other things in the market, most of these businesses are quite cheap. All three of these companies are currently trading for less than 10 times free cash flow. And so uh, looking at this, those are the kind of businesses that not only would make sense in the Berkshire portfolio, but something that I think would be would be like an actual target today based on their valuations. Yeah, another thing that I think has a lot of Berkshire qualities are some of the real estate stocks, especially today. Um, Berkshire, until recently, had a company called Store Capital in its portfolio, which ended up getting taken private. And Store Capital was a net lease REIT that essentially owned retail and service industry properties primarily. Um, the most direct direct comparison to that in the public market today, I would say, is Realty Income. Uh, ticker symbol is O. And REITs, one, Buffett loves real estate uh, in general. He's written about it several times in old Berkshire letters even, um, saying how he'd rather own a farm than own, you know, a, own gold. For example, like, you know, he, he loves real assets that generate capital and things like that. Very stable cash flow for the most part in real estate. Um, so realty income, because of the interest rate environment, REIT stocks have been beaten down recently and pay very attractive dividend yields. And Berkshire loves a good solid dividend that has a great track record of going up. Uh, realty income pays about five and a half percent or probably even more right now um, and has a, you know, it's a, it's has a 20 seven 28 year streak of raising its dividend every quarter i can't even keep track anymore it's made over 600 consecutive monthly dividend payments to shareholders dating back to even before it was a publicly traded company and it just has a really good record and just a lot of qualities berkshire would like and it's big enough that berkshire could actually buy a stake and have it be a needle moving investment um, yeah, I was going to just mention, though, because one thing that is so hard with real estate, even relative to other things, is because of the way that real estate trusts are structured. Berkshire can only own so much. Right. Like I think by the way that uh, REITs are chartered, they can't you can't own more than any single person can own more than five percent. It's kind of the way that they've been structured over time. And so, like, even with, you know, uh, other uh, you, you know, you see like with Apple, for example, it doesn't want to go over that 10% threshold. With REITs, you can't even go over five. Yeah, and I mean, you can with, with special permission. So the, the technical rule the technical rule is that no five shareholders can control 50% of a REIT. Um, so in, in practical nature, some REITs limit ownership to 10%. Some try to limit it to an even lower threshold, as you mentioned, 5%. Uh, with store capital, Berkshire owned about 9% at one point. Um, just because it's a small REIT, that's probably what he had to own for it to be an interesting investment. But it's generally undesirable from a regulatory standpoint to own 10% of any company, um, which is why Berkshire you know, is very selective about what it owns more than 10% of, even though it could easily afford to buy more than 10% of a lot of the companies that it owns. It doesn't really want the regulatory headaches. Uh, with REITs, it's, it's more of a hard line in the sand. Um, so best case scenario Berkshire can own 10% of a REIT like you said five is more likely um, so multiply the the market cap by you know 10% on the generous end and if it fits in Berkshire's you know the context of Berkshire's portfolio which realty income does um, you know the, the other big stable REITs that could make a lot of sense Prologis we've talked about on a recent video um, that's another one that could make a lot of sense at the current level for Berkshire um, but I'd love to see them replace store capital in their portfolio with some other real income generating real estate, especially in this environment. Um, it'd be a great way to put some of their cash to work without sacrificing yield, which is, I think, a big thing Berkshire is hesitant about. That is 140 something billion dollars of cash that now is generating like 5% interest. So it, it's a less easy decision to get rid of that. Um, even if there's a nice opportunity. So I think that'd be a good alternative. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to click subscribe if you don't subscribe to my channel already. And as always, this video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. Be sure to visit www.fool.com slash Frankel to receive the 10, top 10 best stocks to buy now.